The intention of this video is to share my experience with other Awakening Dark Knights. Take what works, toss what doesn't, and get good my fellow gamers. There are three general approaches that I have observed from other DKs. One is not necessarily better than the other as each have their own merits. Offensive. Moves into space to overwhelm the opponent by luring multiple crowd control strings and damage. Defensive. Holds space by threatening skills to zone the opponent. Neutral. Plays around the space where neither class has an advantage or disadvantage. Neutral isn't highlighted much since it's not flashy to observe, but it's a fundamental aspect to get the most out of DK's toolkit. Awakening Dark Knight is space sensitive compared to many other classes because it isn't functional completely at melee or range. This does mean that it is adaptable, controls a wider area, and operates in certain spaces well for short periods of time. Basic movement is done by casting Smoky Haze, Q Block, Dusk, Q Block, and then repeat. Purpose 1. Maintain neutral space while protected. 2. Regulate forward guard, health, mana, and stamina. 3. Assist in cooldown management. Because I do not have a perfect image of all the other class capabilities, this movement affords time to assess an unknown opponent without committing more than what is necessary. Smoky Haze and Dusk are estimated to have a gap at the first 0.1 second of the animation. Blocking for 0.5 second allows for cooldowns to cycle at max rank. In most situations where the gap is going to be exploited, it is better to block or use another movement option. The average player has a reaction speed of 0.25 second, excluding latency. This means that using the movement proactively is significantly safer than using it reactively. Due to the reliance on camera manipulation, it is recommended to adjust mouse sensitivity for 180, 360 degree swings to be comfortable and give a reasonable amount of precision. Dark Knights are innately fragile and this is a solution to extend survivability by constantly cycling super armor to regen forward guard at the cost of stamina and health, forward guard to regen health health, stamina, and upkeep DP buff at the cost of itself. Iframe to regen health, mana, and forward guard at the cost of stamina. A moving target is harder to hit. It can be a hefty time cost to view cooldowns and reassess a combat state. In matches of pacing, these precious seconds can be the difference between victory and defeat. Executing Dusk or Smoky Haze plus Kubok is about 1 second and can be used as a time reference to internalize cooldowns. Setting up the UI to reduce glance time for cooldowns Visual aid for movement gaps and hit cones is also advised. Spacing. One dusk, melee or aggressive space. Two dusks, weak space. Around here is your neutral space. Three dusks is your strong space. Four dusk is your defensive space or recovery space. It's a gradual curve between the zones rather than absolute space. Be mindful of the weak space because Awakening DK does not fight well in this area regardless of the class. It is close enough where range abilities can be punished and far enough where melee skills do not reach and can be countered. How to control space. For example, holding onto C to Catastrophe at maximum range forces an opponent to remain protected while in range of the skill. Using it immediately allows them to push space with less risk. When to use an ability then. When attempting to maintain neutral, look for an unprotected state or a good trade. Good trades can be classified as damage pressure, resource tax, or conditioning responses with feints and baits. It really boils down to who and what class you are against. Take into consideration that the spacing is a general approach to all classes and situations. 1v1 matchups will change who has priority depending on the class, such as a succession ranger being stronger in the third dust space and further, but weaker inside the second dust space or closer. Weapon Stance Animation Cancelling It is advisable to remap the Weapon Stance key to a mouse button. This change eases the difficulty of inputting lateral animation cancelling. Awakening DK is one of the few classes that frequently swaps between stances. Block Cancel Press and hold A or D, quickly tap Weapon Stance key and let go of A or D and press Q. Dusk and Smoky Haze Cancel Press and hold A or D. Quickly tap Weapon Stance key and input command for Dusk or Smoky Haze. The value of stance cancelling comes with time and against experienced opponents. A way to keep track of Weapon Stance is when in block, left tilt up equals main stance. Right tilt up equals awakening stance. Start slow then gradually speed up. It is possible to Dusk and Smoky Haze stance swap cancel quick enough where there is no audio or visual cue. When weapon stance changing into awakening, forward guard linger can always be guaranteed by holding S, A, or D and weapon swapping. 
Abilities. Almost all of DK's abilities complete their animation faster when hit confirming at higher FPS. Attack speed seems to multiply the effect. Faster animation on hit results in tighter gaps, higher DPS, and allows for combos that aren't possible at lower FPS. Skill points. Awakening DK needs around a minimum of 1700 skill points to function. Detailed information will be provided on how I use the abilities in the next section. Determine for yourself it is, if it is worth the investment. Some abilities are used dramatically different depending on playstyles and should be used to suit your purposes. Additional movement and utility skills have high priority, followed by proactive and reactive catch skills. Secondary CC, combo abilities, and core choice should then be considered. Filler, Luxury, and Rabum spells are situational and should be spent with extra points. For new DKs, focus on how the skills are used rather than the sp specific information. <laughs> Additional movement skills. An approximate measurement that I go by is 6 steps are equal to a dusk on a leveled surface. 1 step is about a character width. Smoky Haze equals 2 dusk. Default hit angle cone is estimated to be 90 degrees. I can use most of these skills in neutral to gain some type of space, pressure, or cooldown advantage and meditate disadvantages. A common disadvantage DK must deal with is grabs. Trading one or two of these skills to remove the disadvantage limits melee range options of the opponent. Chain Dusk Movement compensation to maintain neutral when an opponent suddenly moves into weak space or during an offset timing of combat movement. Can be used to aggressively push or move into defensive space. Nocturne Flow Dark Execution W version for attack, cast, move speed slow. S version to maintain neutral. D version catch an opponent in an unprotected state with float. A version damage pressure. Hotkey swaps into main stance. A lot of information is gathered about who I am fighting. Which playstyle am I against? What is the extent of my opponent's mechanics and knowledge? How adaptable are they? The answer to these questions help formulate a plan to combat them. Once a profile of the opponent is ascertained, I can attempt to feint or bait the opponent and capitalize on a condition response. A reverse variation can be done by offsetting the aim 30 degrees. It should be done when the opponent is occupying melee space. It takes 0.5 seconds to set up and can be activated anytime within the next 1.5. Nocturne Mixup is versatile. Change the timing, version, and variation to suit your needs. Airstrike. Reactive emergency escape to obtain neutral. Using it over chain dust protects at the beginning of the skill as opposed to the end. It is risky to utilize this before an opponent has committed to a skill as it leaves me vulnerable during the last part of animation. Can be used to aggressively bypass forward guard. This is done by offsetting the aim where the skill would hit to the left or right of the opponent, use the skill moving past the 180 degree forward guard cone line, then flick the aim back in. Mouse moving the airstrike can shorten the distance, it gives greater control, but needs a clutter-free UI to use accurately. It can be used as a last resort peel option at range for an ally. Airstrike can be extended with smoky haze but requires a lot of spatial awareness and control. Hitting the float is ideal, but a bound is better than nothing. When attempting to bypass FG, flicking too early in the movement or too sharp of an angle derps into the forward guard. Flicking too late or having a shallow angle will land the bound or completely miss. In other words, I must flick the aim before the end of the movement animation and before I start the float animation to hit the CC and have the proper angle. Hallucination Snare Reactive movement to maintain neutral and expand area of control when the opponent has committed to a skill. It will consume the cooldown of chain dust for iframe, but leaves the DK vulnerable at the end. The stun trap left behind should be played around to cover the weak space. Can be used to cover flanks just before a fight occurs. It can be bound to a hotkey to save chain dust cooldown. Press and hold A or D first, then quickly tap F if you are having trouble with the skill. With D and F, I drop my middle finger onto the D and roll the, the F input with my index finger. With a bit of practice, it should become natural to execute. Shattering Darkness, primary damage, trade, and pressure skill while maintaining neutral. Flow Bombardment, cast it in place against non-aggression and backwards to counter-aggression. Flow, Darkness Outpouring, it can be used to aggressively bypass forward guard. Sometimes the flow can be used as a secondary CC going backwards uh, and is utilized to counter additional aggression. Continue to keep the reticle on the opponent during animations. This helps maintain a forward guard in the correct direction if they are attempting to bypass it. Be wary when going forward with flow darkness outpouring as it has no protection and can be easily punished if you are predictable. Twilight Dash, used to reposition and damage trade. The skill does more damage with higher FPS but at the cost of distance. 
60 minus FPS will do the least damage but provide the most distance. 120 plus FPS will do the most damage but travel the least distance. Can be cancelled with Dusk, Chain Dusk, and Hallucination Snare. FPS will change how the skill is utilized. Mouse moving in place can deal additional damage to compensate for low FPS. Utility skills. These skills are multi-purpose. They don't quite have the movement or raw damage or range, but it is used by all three styles of DK. Unveiled Dagger. Used to shorten the animation of damage-based skills and is an opener skill for every main stance combo. Tip. Press and hold F, then tap W before the animation ends for Unveiled Airstrike. Choice. Should I go with Base or Max Rank Unveiled Dagger? If you are pumping Unveiled for attack speed buff, then keep it at base for reduced stamina cost. If you want to have more space and control with a bit of extra damage, maxing it is also viable. Spirit Hunt. Last resort movement to maintain protected neutral without committing any major skills. Sometimes used to aggressively push space and can be used as extra damage. Cluster of Despair. Damage pressure with baiting, zoning, and movement debuff. It's important to hit the opponent with debuffs if it is too difficult to break their defenses. You may not have the damage to outright break a forward guard or pressure for full SA rotations. Using this in conjunction with Nocturne debuff gives you better windows of opportunity. It takes about 1 second to wind up and channels for 1 second. Using the skill in neutral yields the best results as it, as it covers the weak space and can be mouse moved. Be wary of the 1 second channel time after mouse moving. Attack speed buffs will, and debuffs will change the ti channel timing. Proactive catch skills. Abilities that present kill pressure with little drawbacks if used within the correct spacing and timing. These are skills that the opponent must respect with protection as it can set up full combo scenarios. Shadow Bullet. Use the neutral and third dust zone, fishing for gaps while fainting movement. It also sets up a safe airstrike. Kill option at range for ally. The target must be tracked the entire animation for the CC to land. If the CC doesn't hit, the movement slow debuff is a consolation effect. Choice. Manual aim allows grounding shots, which extend the range by an additional 3 steps. The major drawback to using manual aim is that Nocturne has 1 step, less jump range, and sometimes fizzles in place. Shadow Bullet Air is used in the same exact manner. Air Bullet can bait unprotected range CC trades well due to the iframe. However, the timing takes practice. Slanted Balance. Frequently used aggressively, defensively, in damage trades and catching unprotected states in melee situations. Seed of Catastrophe, Flow, Root of Catastrophe. Holding onto Seed is very valuable as it weaves with Shattering Darkness and Cluster of Despair. It also provides a lot of options with protection, movement, and damage pressure. Primary Catch and Peel option at range for an ally in large scale fights. These two patterns are frequently casted because it is easy to do. Seed, Seed Flow, Shatter, Shatter Flow, Shatter Flow Flow, Cluster. Shatter, Shatter Flow, Shatter Flow Flow, Seed, Seed Flow, Cluster. A weave variation can be done by doing Shatter, Seed, Seed Flow, Shatter Flow, Shatter Flow Flow, Cluster. Partial Weaves. Shatter, Seed, Shatter Flow, Seed Flow, Cluster. Shatter, Seed, Shatter Flow, Shatter Flow Flow, Cluster. Seed, Shatter, Shatter Flow, Seed Flow, Cluster. Seed, Shatter, Shatter Flow, Shatter Flow Flow, Cluster. The main reasons for using different variations are alter windows of vulnerability with different spacing, timing, and protection. Weaving SA and FG to extend longevity in a damage trade scenario. Impose kill pressure with Seed and Shatter Flow feints or baits. It becomes difficult to punish an Awakening DK if they change their patterns, spacing, and even dropping weaves such as Shatter, Shatter Flow, Nocturne. Weaves can be adapted to what the opponent is doing and how they are spacing. Going backwards with Shatter Flow Flow will give you FG. Additionally, foregoing damage to maintain neutral is sometimes better than mispositioning. Main flows can be split from their attached skills and weave as long as you can cast Shatter or Seed. Flows can't be casted unless their attached ability is on CD. Choice. Manual aiming Seed at the ground can increase the total range to 2 Smoky Haze plus 4 steps. Should you go manual or auto aim? In 1v1 and skirmishes, the auto aim is better due to the reliance of Nocturne mixups and ease of tracking shadow bullet. In large scale, manual aiming can be the difference between CC on 2 opponents or 7.
Reactive catch skills also impose kill pressure, however, due to the wind-up time, stationary animation, and gaps, it is advisable to use these skills in response to something. There are scenarios in which going for SA damage or CC is the play, however, it should be done with reservation. Wheel of Fortune Zoning skill for melee space Primary deterrent against unprotected engages Takes about 1.5 seconds to, for the skill to complete Estimated 0.25 second gap at the start Followed by a 0.75 second SA windup The float hits after 1 second followed by a 0.5 second linker Which can cover the gaps into following skills such as Dusk or Smoky Haze Lunacy of a Deer functions exactly like Wheel with the same hitbox and radius However, it bounds instead of floats And has a gap at the end there will be times where a few more seconds are needed when forward guard is getting low or broken for other skills to come up. If you have the health to trade, not in threat of getting grabbed and need to stay protected, using Wheel Lunacy Spirit Hunt will help buy the time and space to safely dusk or smoky haze. Split Second Use when someone contests forward guard at melee range with an unprotected attack or to escape a block stun state. The skill requires a lot of class knowledge to use properly. It's nice if you have a good sparring partner willing to tell you their gaps or unprotected states. Hallucination Gap is used in the same exact manner as Split Second but for awakening stance. Secondary CC Abilities Follow up CC that is typically held to use in this manner. Sometimes can be used in aggressive CC strings. Proactive and reactive catches can be used as secondary CC, but it's not always available or ideal. Kama Sylvia Slash Primary protected secondary CC Landing this enables the maximum CC time. Sometimes used to trade FG health for damage against melee SA exchanges. You can split second, slanted balance, comma slash if you are attempting to catch gaps against long melee SA strings. Be flexible about whether to full charge, partial, or comma top skill. The FG protection can be rotated before you lock into the charge animation. Slanted FG linger can help assist in catching gap gaps in windows. G -g gaps Enforcement flow termination. A fallback secondary CC if comma slash isn't available or the opponent is invested in knockdown resist. Can be used to do aggressive CC and damage strings. Spirit Blaze Flow Spirit Blaze Function similar to enforcement, however, missing a CC on the first hit and flow makes it risky for an aggressive CC string. Use if I'm already in awakening stance, close, and safe enough to go for optimal combo damage. The flow can be assigned a hotkey and will allow you to cast it just for damage and main stance. Combo Abilities Abilities that are mostly used in conjunction with another when certain conditions are met for extra damage or opportune moments. Awakening TK combos are free-flowing by nature. You must have a basic understanding about BDO CC mechanics to string damage on the fly. I recommend looking into this independently before diving into the next section. When you are comfortable with just moving around in space and using everything previously discussed, Awakening starts to come together. Be creative and adjust to what abilities are available with current FPS and attack speed status. Let's go. Hidden Strike. Extra damage following Unveiled Dagger can be used to do an aggressive CC string and assigned a hotkey. Pervasive Darkness. Main stance combo for debuff and extra damage. Tip. Main stance catch. Unveiled. Hidden. Pervasive, secondary CC, FG trades, split second, pervasive, slanted, comma slash, flow, vidir strike, use when hit confirming an airstrike, it can be used as additional movement when using airstrike to escape, the direction of the flow can be changed, 60 FPS, shadow bullet, unveiled, airstrike, flow, vidir strike, Enforcement. It's possible to do Shadow Bullet, Unveiled Airstrike, Flow, Vidir Strike, Unveiled, Hidden, Pervasive, Enforcement, Float. However, I couldn't record it due to the dips in FPS. Sudden Attack. Opportunity Catch following a Smoky Haze. If all of your proactive CCs are on cooldown, the opponent is in an unprotected state, and if you are in the space with the timing to catch, using this will allow reactive catches to be used as a follow-up. You can curve sudden attack with how fast you can camera swing your smoky haze. It's possible that you can unveiled or enforcement first hit as an opportunity catch if you are close enough. Darkness Burst 
similar opportunity catch to sudden, but slower following dusk and chain dusk. Using it after sudden attack, hidden strike, air strike, low, vadir strike, pervasive darkness, obsidian ashes, and Lunacy of a Deer will skip to the second hit. It has no cooldown and can be used to mix in for aggressive CC strings. The situation doesn't come up often, but you can chain KB to push someone off a sharp slope, but not an edge. The first hit animation can also be used to feint a slanted balance. Flow Ravage Rake Animation cancels Ravage Rake and can follow up a sudden attack. It has a rare window of usage for extra damage, can be used in an aggressive CC string. Soul Snatch functions similar to Darkness Burst and Sudden Attack but for an awakening stance. You can Soul Snatch, Spirit Blaze, or go into a wheel. Trap of a Deer Evasion debuff ability. Depending on the opponent's class and equipment, the ability is held and is a must land in combo, typically used after a secondary CC. If you are struggling to consistently execute, tap and hold S, then quickly roll the index finger onto the F. You can hotkey it to guarantee the input, especially if executing time sensitive combos. Because of how slender the hitbox is, you might have to 180 degrees the ability to land a debuff. You can do Shadow Bullet, Air Strike, the Deer Strike, Unveiled into a Hidden, Comma Slash, Trap. Spirit Legacy. Primary kill combo ability with DP debuff and is held into conditions or met. Typically used after a secondary CC. It can be used as damage pressure outside of combo setting or to tax entry into weak space. But be wary of what you have available if you need a kill combo. Primary CC, combo damage, secondary CC. Stop if you're against an evasion, then you hit that Spirit Legacy combo damage. Trade FG damage, split second, pervasive, slanted, comma slash, spirit legacy, and you hit that sweet, sweet shadow. Dark Nebula. It can be full casted as damage pressure outside a combo setting or tax to enter weak space, but typically animation cancelled after legacy to maintain space. It is sometimes used with Trap of a Deer for additional movement, rarely cancelled with Spirit Hunt. Full casting Dark Nebula will let you choose to go forwards or backwards. Animation cancelling will always send you backwards. If you want to full cast this following a Spirit Legacy for extra damage, press and hold S until you see movement, then shift Q. Filler damage spells. Situational skills that are used to deal damage when all major abilities have been exhausted. Obsidian Ashes. Primary range damage filler in main stance. Sometimes the distance can be a bit further or closer by one step. There are some inconsistencies with how hit detection happens, such as C being very consistent with manual aim grounding extensions, but Obsidian Ashes locked in about 3 dusk plus 3 steps. This might have to do with how some spells are considered pets, but I'm not sure. There is a 1 second wind up before the ability goes off. It can be extended with Smoky Haze after 0.5 second, however, will only move at dusk plus one step. Ravage Rake. Last resort melee damage filler in main stance due to the long animation time. Corrupt Ground. Uh, this is your primary melee damage filler when you're in main stance. It's got a one second wind up. You don't use it too often, it's pretty rare. Enough said. Hits pretty hard for a pre-awakening skill. Scarring Slash, Unclosed Scar. I don't use it because of the stamina cost. It could be decent melee filler damage. If you have a Deer's Dogma active, you can reposition for back attacks if the opponent is caught in a standing CC state such as a stun. Touch of Exploitation. Primary melee damage filler in Awakening Stance. Pretty solid, has a forward guard, decent animation. Grip of Grudge. Last resort damage filler in Awakening Stance. It's a very cool looking ability doesn't do any damage in PvP, it has decent range, and that's all it's got going for it. Luxury Spells. These spells have niche applications. Imperious Command. Passively used to add extra damage via Mark Explosion, you pop it with a Comma Slash. Sometimes you can use it before a large scale team fight to check for hidden opponents. It's risky to do, but it could be the difference between that stealthy getting a fat pre-engage on your main ball or just whiffing it. The Deer's Dogma. Not used, but if you got infinite mana potion, you want your weapon to have a mist effect and look all cool. It does increase the damage of sudden attack and scarring slash. Spirit Satiation. 
Not really used in PvP, but it's great for style and mana regen. Problem spells. For situational usage, they will swap you in the main stance. You gotta pick between the two. So you got Balance Strike and Slant Slash, Shadow Strike or Wrath of a Deer, and Obsidian Blaze or Unveiled Fate. Balance Strike. God Tier Air Strike. You can animation cancel it at any time with Dusk, Chain Dusk. The air smash is 100%. You can use it to toss people off sharp slopes. I mostly use it as a emergency escape. Sometimes I use it aggressively. Sometimes I use it to peel for an ally. It is possible to bait a reaction with a cancel. And you can also use it to approach odd angles. Something common that is done for that super movement is Balance Strike, you Dust Cancel, you Unveiled, you Smoky Haze Cancel, then you do an Air Strike Cancel. Your other choice is Slanted Slash. Not gonna lie, it's pretty difficult to choose this over Balance Strike. You can use it as a secondary CC, but it's risky as a proactive or reactive catch. Just because of that wind up time, the damage, the movement, the protection. The animation can be cancelled with Dusk or Chain Dusk. Shadow Strike. I use this when all my range abilities and awakening stands have been all used up. It lets you drop more damage uh, at range and switches you into pre-awakening so you can then follow up with an obsidian ashes. It does have the same range inconsistencies. Your other choice is Wrath of the Deer. Filler damage similar to Corrupt Ground but it doesn't have a stun and slightly less range. Tough sell due to Awakening DK being outside the range to really fully utilize the skill. Does decent damage. Obsidian Blaze. Uh, this is your last resort protected filler damage. Uh, you can use wheel it to fake. faint a wheel, but it's so rare. <laughs> and usually the fight, if it ever draws out that long, like you'd wheel have to fake. bait them I, several times. I think that's real. <laughs> There is a distinct difference in audio, Real so if whoever you're fighting fake. has their audio no turned, audio, they can tell the, the difference. Uh, on the flip side here, you have Unveiled Fate. Uh, you can use it as a secondary CC, um, but it's risky just because it's slow. That initial Unveiled Dagger part doesn't actually CC, um, and you're locked into the animation the whole time. Alright, uh, Core Choice and uh, Black Spirit Rage. Core Seed of Catastrophe is the one I like to use. Uh, it gives you protected mix up options. Uh, definitely pick the core that best suits you. Uh, normally, I don't like to tell people what to do, but I highly discourage uh, going with Touch of Exploitation and Spirit Blaze. I've uh, tried really really hard to figure out what I could do to make these two works it's just the other choices are superior in every way. Uh, core Spirit Hunt is uh, very good if you're an aggressive type of DK especially if you like to take 1v1 and 1vx's um, what it does is it just lets you push that weak space um, and you can use it to bypass uh, FGs by curving the movement, similar of how you would uh, do a smoky haze sudden attack swing. Uh, Core Spirit Legacy is kind of the exact opposite of Spirit Hunt. Um, it's definitely a defensive favorite, so if you like holding space, um, pumping damage as people go into you, you punish them, you tax them for that space that they gain, uh, it's definitely good. Uh, I would say it's more 1v1, 1vx. For large scale, I don't like to uh, just drop it as people are coming into me just for damage because there's usually large other groups people coming in the flanks you're gonna get clipped or something so I can usually hold on to it uh, to secure a kill or uh, maybe a little bit later in the fight. Uh, core Shattering Darkness is uh, very good. It's versatile. Uh, you can use it in 1v1, 1vx, uh, and in large scale. Uh, it gives you that extra CC and in, the AoE is very large on this. You can use it to peel large groups like if you can stiffen the whole entire ball that's amazing it is possible but you have to be on a pretty wild flank which um well that's another uh video in itself uh, large scale fights with dk awakening uh, well i've already said my bit for uh core seed of catastrophe uh, so there's no nothing much to say there
Realistically, feeding 200% BSR to DK in large scale doesn't happen. It's not practical. They can't take the damage. They can't survive during their animations. It's just more useful in other classes. Legacy 100 functions exactly like the core. Uh, you get a little bit of extra damage. You get that injury. It has the same hit radius projection. Uh, however, you're trading the FG for SA uh, and you have to kind of lock it and unlock it because sometimes uh, that delayed cast time that happens with the 100% BSR will get you killed. And how does it get you killed? Well, you go into a SA damage trading scenario, which is not very good. DK does not essay trade well at all. Lunacy 100 feels very good to use just because of the way you normally would use it. You can leave it unlocked uh, just because of this. It has the same hit radius. Uh, in addition, when you use the 100%, it removes the gaps. The total animation is about 4 seconds. Uh, the windup is about 0.5 before the stun CC starts to tick, and it ticks for about 1.5. Uh, then it starts to do bound ticks for the next one second, and then it lingers for another uh, one second with the super armor. I'm a bit heartbroken about 50% shatter and the 25% uh, spirit hunt. They're decent and functions exactly like the core. The only problem they have is that long wind-up animation. This is also a reason why I prefer to run Seed of Catastrophe Core, because you can use the BSR versions to essentially have the same effect, if it wasn't for that weird awkward delay at the start. 10% Griff offers no protection, no CC, it has a smaller range than normal version. It does extra damage and range based off the old values, so it feels really bad, but for 10% BSR, it's great for knocking players off cannons in Node Wars or Siege. Skill add-ons are preference-based and should be built to how you play. Because I am more focused on neutral, it's catered to be more adaptable and dealing burst damage combos instead of DPS. In caps and tier 1s, it's a little bit different. I've seen many, many different styles of DK, so definitely figure out what type you are, how you like to play, and build it out from there. Hopefully, me going over all the individual skills earlier kind of shows you why I go with these add-ons. 1. Practice the combat movement or basic movement. Observe your opponent's class and playstyle. Look at what they're doing, look at how they're moving. Neutral is a way to combat against equipment disparities. However, there is a limit. You can assess defensive tolerances with your FG that'll help you decide how you want to proceed with the fight. Expand your skills with additional movement options and reactive catches. Learn when to use and trade them. I've died countless times seeing what I could get away with. 2. Gather information on your opponent's habits. Mix in some proactive catches, use your utility skills, and drop some damage pressure. When you drop that damage pressure and you're hitting SA or their FG, see how they react to it. Whether they back up or they continue to push you. It will let you know if you are in a outright damage pressure, full, or even back-to-back -back combo scenario. 3. When equipment and class matchups are relatively equal, resort to attacking the mental facilities of your opponent, such as disrupting the pace, abusing class knowledge, situational awareness, and adaptability. Be able to animation cancel weapon stance swaps in combat and adjust ability usage and combos based on available cooldowns. Managing stamina, the FG, your health, it really starts to become relevant in high levels of play. Being able to switch between different styles efficiently and effectively is ideal for Awakening DK. You can play different zones, you can be aggressive, you can really move in and out of space really well. Keep in mind that you want to consistently be moving in and out of space. If you're in one space too long, you end up either losing pressure or you're dead. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to watch 
Uh, I hope you learned something. I want to see Awakening DKs at higher levels of play. I feel like I'm capped. Uh, special thanks to Flannels, who kind of enamored me to develop this neutral playstyle. Uh, mixtapes for helping me kind of work through and go through the entire process. Tez, kind of who actually got me started on this guide to share it with other DKs. Botus, who's had to hear me rant and go a little bit over in detail, helped me kind of keep back in line. And uh, Del Rouge, uh, another DK, really good amazing to kind of reinforce all my thoughts and uh, to the isolated members uh, who came in to BA let me test things and uh, show me even a couple of things. Alright, let's go Wakening DKs!